Hello, my friends. This is a yoga journaling meditation combo practice. Those of you in my uplifted community know that this is something I really encourage you to do, to really combo movement and writing and meditation in a way that's personal and interconnected for you. But I know it can be sort of hard to sometimes know how they weave together on your own. So in this video, we are going to do all three together. What you're gonna need is to be near a wall because for the sequence, I have some poses planned at the wall for us. You're obviously gonna need your journal and a pen and have it right at the top of the mat and then have as many props as you own just out. I always love being surrounded by props in my personal practice. And if you have meditations or uh, meditation cushions or a blanket for meditation that you like to sit on, obviously have that nearby as well. So we're going to begin in a downward facing dog. So you can just kind of yawn back into your down dog and take as much time as you need. So I'm actually taking my feet as wide as the mat. So the feet are wider than hip width apart and I'm extending through my fingers and just pressing the torso towards my thighs. Just waking up the backs of the legs as a first step. Take a huge deep breath in here for three counts, breathe in. Nose or mouth, breathe out. And two more like that, breathe in. And breathe out. Good. One more, huge breath in. Really root the knuckles into the mat, breathe out. Good, take your feet back to hip width apart. So normal dog stance if you widen them. Pedal through the legs a few times here. Bring your ears in line with your biceps. And then just raise onto your tippy toes so the heels lift. Bend the knees really deeply as if the knees wanted to touch the mat. Shoot then the sitting bones towards the ceiling. And then slowly yearn the heels back down to the ground. A deeper stretch in the backs of the legs. Good. Take the knees down, come into an all fours position, shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. Breathe in, just ripple into your up cat. Hmm. Collarbones back. And then exhale super deeply round into your down cat. So tailbone lengthens towards the knees. Head point straight down. And then we'll do this on your own, but see if you can wait for my call. So breathing in is up cat. And breathing out is down cat. And breathing in. See if you can wait for my call. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. And this time, take the knees wide. And breathing out, child's pose. Rest the forehead. And move the hips a little bit side to side here to just feel into your low back. A huge deep breath into the triangle of your low back. And just keep sweeping the hips side to side. Good. And breathe in. Come on up to all fours. Step the right foot between the hands. 
And if you have blocks, use them. If not, just use furniture, whatever you have nearby. We're just melting into a low lunge. So you can always pad your back knee with a blanket. Again, make it really juicy. And then just allow the hips to be heavy. Notice if the shoulders are creeping up by the ears. Work to draw those down and back. And just look for a stretch in the front of the left leg, the psoas. We'll take five deep breaths here. Close your eyes if you can. And just slow down. Just make your in-breaths as slow as possible. And your out-breaths as long as the in-breaths. Final two breaths here. And then curl the back toes under. We're just coming into a simple fold in which we straighten the front leg. So you can keep the legs wide or you can pop that back left foot in to square off the hips more. Again, because this is a totally personal practice, I'm not super focused on being in the exact perfect yoga alignment. As long as you're in a safe alignment and the body feels safe, just be where it feels like a beautifully delicious stretch for you and where you're prioritizing length in your spine. So crown of the head and tailbone shoot apart from one another and prioritize length over just folding down and getting the forehead to the knee, yeah? And stay up, two more breaths. Maybe take the hips a little side to side. Good, and now allow yourself to be fully passive in the upper body and fold. Crown of head can point towards the floor. Work to anchor that right hip back and the left hip forward, and then press down through the right big toe. Again, use props or furniture to the best of your ability. Maybe wag the hips side to side, even here. Good, and then flex the front foot so the toes point up to the ceiling. And I'm gonna prioritize length in the spine again now, just staying really long. Two breaths here, lifted. Good, and now exhale, let yourself surrender down. If you don't have blocks, use the furniture in your room or use like hand on a coffee table and hand on a chair for support. Even if you're crazy flexible, it's much nicer to have some support underneath the hands. Last breath. Good, and then set the sole of the foot down. Listen carefully, I'm gonna step to the top of my mat. I'm gonna heel toe my feet wide and come down into Malasana squat pose. If Malasana is really challenging for you, you can always be sitting on your block or you can kind of just come down halfway and sort of be like in a here position. Ooh, this feels really good. <laughs> so any of those options, just to stretch the inner thighs for a moment. And totally good to keep our kind of rocking side to side. Mm. Nice, last breath wherever you are. And then we'll just take it into a forward fold. So turn the toes forward, feet hip width apart. If you have the blocks, use them. Once again, inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Mm, breathing in, flat back. Mm, breathing out to fold. 
Same thing. See if you can wait for my call. I'm breathing in. I'm breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. It's okay if your legs stay bent this whole time. We'll just hang now. You can clasp opposite elbows. And just gently sway side to side. Feel through all four corners of the feet. And then micro bend the knees. Round up, one vertebra at a time. Vertebra and vertebra stack, head is last thing to come up. And then turn the palms to the left and right of the room. Anchor the tailbone down, feel your hip points lift. And then inhale, just reach up. Exhale, press the air away. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, press the air away. Activate through the fingers, biceps engaged. Good, one more inhale, reach up. Clasp the hands above your head. Let the index finger point out. Breathe in, reach up, get tall. And exhale, tick tock over to the right. So just finding a little side body motion here. Awakening the side body, draw the shoulders down and back. And keep the feet hip width apart. Lengthen the tailbone towards the heels. Last breath. Breathe into those top side ribs. Good. And then just take it the opposite way. It doesn't matter if you're moving the same or different way as me. Just take it to the opposite side. Huge breath in. Reground through the feet. And huge breath out. Roll the top shoulder over the bottom shoulder. Take the weight into the outer edge of the foot that's not leaning. More weight into that outer edge of foot. Good. And then reach up. Exhale. Just fold forward. Beautiful. Inhale. Half lift. Exhale. Just step it back to your dog. If you're craving to take plank, chaturanga up dog, if you're like a regular yoga practitioner, go for it. Otherwise, just hold down dog for me. And we'll gently take the knees down, back to table. We'll take the left foot forward now between the hands. So I have that right foot on a blanket, second side, low lunge. So I have my hands on blocks. I'm allowing the pelvis to sink and get heavy, looking for a stretch now in the right psoas. So front of the right thigh. Make sure that front knee is directly lined up over the ankle. Pad the back knee with a blanket, really good idea. You can curl the toes under or have the toes out. Just see which is the best stretch for you. So a lot of the ways we personalize our practice is just through experimenting, pure trial and error, and getting curious about what feels good in your own body. Three more deep breaths here. Last breath. Good. And then curling the back toes under if they're not already. Coming into our forward fold with just the left foot forward. You can pop that right foot in or you can kind of have the stance longer. Again, whatever's working for you. We'll start with the flat back variation. So just inhaling spine parallel to the ceiling, prioritizing length. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, 
breathe out. We're anchoring the left sitting bone back, yearning the right sitting bone forward. And then now allow yourself to be passive and descend in the upper body. Just let everything drop. Few breaths here, maybe rock the hips side to side. If the mind wanders, come back to your breathing, making those inhales and exhales equal length. It's okay to kind of move the torso in space and again experiment, see where you're finding your deepest stretch. Good, and now flex the front foot, toes point straight up to the sky. There you go. And we'll stay long in the flat back first. Line of energy between tail and crown of head. And now exhaling to fold. And let the upper body drape. And again, I'm constantly moving the hips side to side, but in a very gentle and subtle way. Just getting curious about what's going on and where the deepest stretch is happening for me. How can I breathe and lean into it more? And last breath. Good, and then lower that left foot back to the ground. We'll just step back into our dog. So just step back to dog. And breathe into the whole body here. Maybe pedal through the legs once again, just noticing anything that's changed in the body. You can hold here, you can come to all fours and take cat-cow, or you can ripple through another little chaturanga plank to up dog. We'll all meet downward facing dog. Take the right leg high to the sky. Bend the knees, stack the hips. And then exhale, draw knee to nose just once. Pull the abs in, reach the right leg up and back. And then set the right chin down for your pigeon pose. So you'll just place the shin forward. Pad the right hip with a blanket or a block or however you like to sort of modify your pigeon. We're not going for the deepest pigeon ever. We just want it to be comfortable because we're also gonna journal here. So first, just enjoy the stretch. Come on down. You can come on to the elbows or rest your head on a block. We'll just take four or five breaths to be fully present for the sensation that's happening in the right hip. And breathe in, inflate that right hip as if it were a balloon with your in-breath, sending your breath deliberately there. And exhaling all the way. Good. Last breath. Nice. Staying in your pigeon to whatever capacity you can. You'll find your journal at the top of the mat. And you'll just open it up to your page. 
and just allow words to spill out onto the page now. Just stream of consciousness. See what comes up. And if you're struggling and you really need a prompt, I hope that you can just brain dump onto the page. But if you really need a prompt, use the prompt, I need to not live in fear of blank. I need to not leave in, live in fear of blank and just journal from there. Take a little break when you're ready. And just leave your journal there. You can come up slowly, just rock from side to side as long as it doesn't hurt the knee. And a lot of times I put my journal up on a block as well when I'm doing this. So if you're still kind of figuring out how to be in pigeon and journal at the same time, just know that props are helpful. Curl the back toes under, press back into your down dog, pedal through the legs. You can flow through chaturanga or skip it. Maybe you wanna press back into child's pose. We'll take the other side. So take the left leg up and back. Bend the knees, stack the hips. Exhale, knee to nose just once. Inhale, left leg up and back. Good. and then step the shin through for your pigeon. Take time to set up in the pigeon stance that you really wanna be in, adjust the props. Make sure that your foot is on something soft and not something hard. Inhale, find a little length. And exhale, just lowering down, giving ourselves five breaths just to feel sensation and nothing else in the hip. I'm using any props you need. Send your breath into the left hip with your inhale, expand it. And exhale, just dissipate any tension. A few more like that. Challenging yourself to breathe as deeply as you have so far. Breath at the deepest, fullest, ripest point.
You can just stay here and enjoy the stretch. Or you can do some journaling on this side too. If you need a prompt, use the prompt, my worry about X or my worry about blank is unfounded. And journal from there. Make any micro movements or adjustments you need for these last few moments. Maybe adding a twist in your pigeon, continuing to write or taking a break. Good, and then as you're ready, curl the back toes under and step it back to your dog. Lower the knees down. Ripple into an up cat. Melt back into a child's pose. Good. We're going to come into Janu Shursasana at the wall before we sit and meditate. This is our last pose. So you've done this pose with me before and how it works, likely, you've done it with me before, is you have the left sole of foot on the upper right inner thigh and then the seam of the right thigh is really angling towards the ceiling so the toes point straight up. We're just gonna do it at the wall and all that means is that the sole of your foot is just going to press into the wall. So that sole of the right foot, see it's just pressing into the wall. And you can baby yourself and put a blanket underneath the heel. If you wanna sit up on a bolster or some pillows under the seat right here, um, that's a good idea too. And then this left sole of foot is just anywhere, hopefully above the knee on the right thigh. And then you're just gonna inhale, get long. And exhale, just fold. Hmm. Think about the stretches we did earlier. So just inhale, find length. And exhale, fold. Make any little adjustments you want with the sits bones, maybe backing the sits bones up. And the foot is actively pressing into the wall here. That's the whole point. As you press the right foot into the wall, really reach with the left arm onto the shin or onto the foot. 
And as you fold, you might find a really delicious stretch on the left side of your low back. Do the best you can to glide the shoulders down and back. It's hard to sort of reach and get the low back stretch without somewhat elevating the shoulders, but just have awareness of it. And then maybe stop reaching, turn the palms face up, let gravity sort of just be your friend, and just fold. You can also take this into a mild twist by taking the right hand to the outside of the right thigh, holding the left shin, or sorry, the left hand holds the right shin, and just sort of letting yourself get heavy and melt forward. Basically, just use your torso and where your torso is in space to deepen this pose. And keep pressing the right foot into the wall. Last breath. Nice. And then a little counter pose. Take the left hand down to the space behind your left seat. And you'll just press up. Mm, hips lift. Just so you can open up. Good, and then we'll take it to the other side. So draw in the right foot and extend the left foot directly into the wall. So readjust your props. You're definitely gonna have to press yourself up to find the right position. Ideally, the hips are square to the wall, but you might you know, not have that range of motion quite yet. You may be a little bit with the hips open and that's okay. Breathe in, reach up. Mm, exhale, fold. Keep pressing the left thigh bone down now and pressing actively the left foot into the floor. So really press the left foot into the wall, not the floor, the wall, and maybe back your sits bones up. So you kind of waddle your sits bones back in space and then reach the right hand to the outside of the left foot, which is really pressing into the wall like crazy. And just find your breath here. And be mindful of that top right shoulder, maybe creeping up into the ear or elevating towards the ear as you fold. And as you hold the left outer shin or the left outer foot with the right hand, you may notice a really nice deep stretch on the right side of your low back. And breathe into any space that's opening on the low back. Breathe into the stretch. Stay here, sort of evolve it into a twist. You can always take the hand to the left of the left thigh and then hold the outer edge of the left shin with the right hand. Bend that left elbow so you have that really bending motion to kind of pull you into a twist. And really, this is like whatever feels good for your back and your hamstring. Keep pressing the left foot into the wall. Last breath. Okay, gently come up. Take the right hand behind the right seat. You're gonna put the pressure on to that right knee as you just lift up mm, to stretch out. Little baby back bend, maybe circle with the arm. Good, and then however you wanna get there, come back into a child's pose. A huge breath in. Good. And then setting yourself up. 
for your meditation seat. So that might mean getting your cushions or organizing your blanket. Do something, even if you think you don't need it. And since we're near the wall, you could always meditate with your back against the wall as well. Mm. Any comfortable seat that works for you. Mm. Take the palms face up in the lap. Take a deep breath in. Exhaling mouth. Again, deep breath in through the nose. Deep breath out through the mouth. Last one. Come in to stillness. Allow the space around you to clear. Allow your horizon to clear. Visualize yourself as this clear, transparent crystal 
refracting light in all directions. Gently dip the chin. Deepen your breath. Take the hands to prayer and bring the thumb to third eye center. Space between the eyebrows, press the thumbs in here. Slide your thumbs down your nose, your lips, down your face till they land at heart center. Deep breath in. Exhaling all the way. One more like that to close, inhaling. Exhaling. Dip the chin again and gently open the eyes. You can lie now and take Shavasana or restorative pose like Goddess or continue to journal or meditate. From my heart to yours, Namaste.